Welcome to episode three of Nisei Monogatari. Last time we got some scenes with Nariko, Karen, and Kanbaru, which was pretty fun. And uh, quite a bit of fan service in there, so we'll see where it goes this time. We're going to watch and discuss. Got the subtitles and timer on the screen. If you want to follow along that way, or you can pull up the episode on the side. But let's get into this thing. Starting with Araragi's eye, very close up here. Let's go in three, two, one. Play. Uh, nice, nice use of the books. Very nice construction. Immaculate. Although rather boring, there's nothing in there now. Araragi, the great wife. Yeah, go ahead. Even if you have to be the wife, it's probably worth it with her. There's that, that whole issue, but, you know, if we disregard that. Well, that's nice to have your blessing there. Oh, really? You, you think it's going to happen with Hanikawa, huh? Did you watch Kizu? I bet you did. Okay, she's just mapping the harem. No. Oh, yeah? It'd be pretty hard to. Whoa, Jesus, that's scary. No, not that. You can take advantage of me all you want, Kanbaru. Of course. Yeah, there's always murder as an option in all of this, so it really complicates things. You think so? I mean, yeah, that the art is terrifying. Looks like Junji Ito. <laughs> Try what? Oh, Hanafuda. Okay. I don't either. Okay, I guess we're gonna play cards for a while. Ah, <laughs> she's getting upset. She still, like, from this shot, she just might as well be naked. She still just looks naked. She's wearing so little. <laughs> no! We can't call it there. Nice callback. Just a game? Just a game? Yeah, it was great. Ah, uh, can we play Twister with Kanbaru? That'd be fun. I mean, it's not like Twister's very much of a game of skill. Like, a little bit. You gotta be in shape a little bit, I guess, but... You just gotta put your hand on the dot. Or whatever. <laughs> but she's the true final boss. Because she got him to play Twister, and she's, she's like, oh... I see how it is. <laughs> Obviously. I don't know what I'm looking at with these cards. Okay. I guess that happened. Back to this. Uh, we get different visuals every, every time with the OP. 
The first time it was just a lot of staplers. The second time there was a lot of Karin and all the bees. And now it's Sendra Gahara with a stapler. Okay, cool. That's awesome to see. That extra effort put in. Did she just staple somebody? Because that was, that was blood. Anyway, while the OP is playing, let me say that if you enjoy these videos, subscribe to the channel. Nisei Monogatari comes out every Saturday with other videos every single day of the week. Also, check out the description down below for Twitter and Discord if you want to come hang out there. And Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here on this channel. Get these videos very early. Vote in polls for what shows I watch. And get exclusive vlogs that will never be on YouTube. Thank you! This is a nice, calm, fun OP. Senjugahara falling, just like we initially saw her at the beginning of the series. About her arm? Okay. Yeah, what did she tell them at all? Just that it's injured in general? And I guess they're just like, eh, sure. I buy it. Who does she live with? I know it's her grandma, but who else? Because her parents are dead. Just grandparents. So yeah, but uh, I guess they trusted that you're fine. Did you, you said it was something to do with your mother? Okay, well, they've, uh, they're worried, but they've minded their business. I really like scenes with her. I kind of want to stay with her for a while. But I guess this is, this blood red and all these shadows. Who do we have here? Hello, sir. What are you doing in front of Kanbaru's house? I don't like it. This is fucking red as shit. Yeah, this is, uh, very ominous. Hello. Now this guy looks like a vampire. Okay. I don't even need to know. Okay, he's heard it from one of the sisters. So is this the guy? Is this the bad guy? Why is he here? Is this the man who had the charms? And who Sinjo Gahara is protecting him from? I'm sorry? Okay, well you looked, so move along. Oh, okay, that's Kanbaru's mother's family. So she is... The legacy of that. I don't know what the significance of her mother's side of the family is. Okay. Well, that's good. Please do. What's this guy's deal? He's like the new Oshino in that he's an adult guy. He's pretty mysterious. Yeah. Um, ah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, clearly there are differences. If you didn't watch Kizu, you'd have no idea who that was.
Which I'm glad I did watch it, because, I mean, if I didn't, then... Oh yeah, he seemed like bad news. Uh, there'd be a mystery of who is Guillotine Cutter, but that's not really much of a mystery. You just don't know who it is. It's not really anything deeper than that. Here she is. I figured she'd show up in this episode just because of the OP, so... And she walks away. <laughs> Fantastic. Damn. Mock speed. Holy shit. Hello. Uh, she sees him out and sees that he's not studying and it's just immediate disappointment. Well, she's the one who canceled. Let him explain. That's your greatest... Wow, that's really insulting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You truly do. You're very lucky that he's accepting of this. <laughs> This man said he's going to marry you. Churaragi. What are you, Mayoi? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, obviously. Clearly. She just says what she wants. <laughs> what? I liked how the sign said danger zone, but you like the D in that one shot was kind of blurred and it looked like it said anger zone. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's actually incredible. That's literally a superpower. Grandma! <laughs> oh, well, that's not what he's doing, and I don't know if you should be. <laughs> The what? You will die. So I'm open-minded about it, but you will die. Oh, because they'll die too. Yes, alright, so... Why? <laughs> Just because? Just... <laughs> With no involvement, you'll just kill her, too? <laughs> Alright, so then you don't think they'll get lonely if there's no afterlife. <laughs> Alright, she's just trying to make sure he understands. Maybe you shouldn't marry her. Maybe you shouldn't put up with this. This is a little bit extreme. <laughs> she gets away with it because it's funny. But if you take it at the least bit seriously... Um, it's horribly terrifying. And you would think you would probably have to flee the country to get away from this woman. I suppose so, yes. Well, all right. Some shopping. Do you... You don't have anything with you. Unless it's small. 
Nice. Well, I mean... <laughs> there was my always incident earlier today. Walked on on a girl naked. Oh, that did happen, yeah. Is that a misdemeanor? No, but there was a lot, and... Yeah. God damn, she is fucking biting. <laughs> Holy shit. She is quick with that shit. <laughs> Kaiki. Is she gonna know the name? I would say so. Whoa. What is happening? Okay, we're cutting back to the kidnapping. So she know So she knows that name and just from that name alone she that she kidnapped him. So she knows him and she knows he's a real dangerous. God damn. So just like on the spot she probably took him. He's wearing the same clothes. Like you got involved with Kaiki. I would like to know though. It sure seems like it. It may, yeah, obviously it is, but still. <laughs> Kaiki Deshu. All right. Okay, she figured it out easily. Mr. Donut, Mr. Donut, falling away from me now. And since she knows him, yep. Holy shit, really? He's not only connected to Nindeko, but Senjugahara. In a really, really bad way. Was he like the con man guy? The one who fucked over your family? He like he like introduced her mom to the cult or whatever it was. So we just have this this human villain for this arc, so it seems. And he's got some kind of connection to Kanbaru with the whole Gaian thing. Not, maybe, not really a connection, but there's something there. The Fire Sisters and Justice Man. That sounds like it could be a band. Justice Man and the Fire Sisters. I'd see that in concert. I like his character design, though. He, he looks sufficiently creepy. Okay, then. Go take him out. Pop him. Like, uh, with a dominator. Like... I think I'll check. 
Who could be calling at this hour? Hanekawa, one of your sisters. You had to know this was going to happen. You had to know. Nice. Holy shit. <laughs> Younger little sister. Help. Oh, shit. Suki, he needs help. Damn! His sister needs help, and he fucking hulks out. What a hero. Damn, he's standing up to her. Yeah, I know. But I'm going. Like he went through Shinobu with his head. That was hilarious. I would never dream of it. <laughs> kind of guy who wouldn't go help his sister in need. Yeah, she already did. She would go gay for Araragi if she was a man. Whoa. This music. Mm -hmm. What is happening? All right, she's allowing him to go. <laughs> it's very hard to get it out, but she did it. Yeah, uh, what was that about? I suspect you're not going to tell us. Oh. I suspected wrong. What's going on with... Okay. Well, this episode cranked up the mystery quite a lot and the intrigue, so yeah, that's pretty exciting. I can't wait to see more, but for now, let's talk about this one. All right, episode three gives us a lot more detail, intrigue, mystery, some direction for the plot, catches us back up to where we started with the kidnapping. I wanna say at the beginning here, I was wrong in my initial assumption as to who Kaiki exactly was in the reaction. We'll talk more about that later. I just wanted to say that now up front. Let's see how many people already commented about it before getting to this point in the video. But yeah, uh, getting us those interactions with Senju Gahara and getting us back to the kidnapping and seeing where we're gonna go, it was good. It was very entertaining and meeting this guy, Kaiki. A great introduction visually. The fact that he ties into Nadeko and Senju Gahara, maybe Kanbaru a little bit. Hanekawa is already on the phone with Senju Gahara, so she'll be tied into. The Fire Sisters are involved. This could be really cool. I don't know exactly what's going to be going on with this guy. If this is just going to be kind of our villain for either this arc or all of Nisei or whatever. Because last time we were dealing with oddities, so if there's just this guy and he's just kind of our villain, that could be interesting. Of course, the Kizu movies had these people that we fought against, a human, a half-human, and a vampire, but they were dispatched fairly quickly. 
If we have a whole show devoted to this guy being a villain, I want to see what he's like, what he's doing, what we're going to do about him. He looks really great. I like his character design a lot. And the red was just so strong. The red sky and the trees and the moon and everything, that whole scene was just so ominous looking. Even if he just stood there and talked, it does a good job setting him up. So him being the one who spread the charms around which got Nadeko involved in her hall business. He's got some kind of information about Kanbaru's mother's side of the family. I don't really remember hearing anything about that before. If we did, you can remind me, but either way, there's something going on there. Nothing too crazy where he feels the need to take any kind of action, but there's something. So that's intriguing. Uh, anything to get Kanbaru in the show more? It's fine with me. I love listening to her and I love looking at her, so yeah. And he was a con man involved with Senjigahara's family. So when this all got brought up, when they were showing us that Senjigahara knew this guy, great scene, how it just immediately cut from them in, them in the street. I'm like, oh, I guess, I guess it was just like that, huh? I thought it'd be later. I thought there'd be a little more buildup, but right then, as soon as she found out that he met this guy, Kaiki, immediately she kidnaps him. That's all it took. Just knowing that he met this guy. Well, that's his name, and you said he was creepy, so who else could it be? Uh, so he's kidnapped, and we're building up to her knowing him, and I'm thinking he's like the guy who got her mother involved in the cult, which led to one of the people trying to rape Senju Gahara. I don't remember all the details from that. I don't even remember if there was like one specific guy who got her involved there. But either way, that's not right. He's just one of the con men who came after. Because I was thinking back on all the details, because it's been a little while since I started Bake. I'm um, thinking about the timeline. And no, she's talking about con men who came after the fact to deal with like her weight loss thing, I think, before it was actually dealt with by Oshino and Araragi. So either way, he was just, he was not that guy. He was just the first of the con men who came later. So either way, he has screwed over the family. She's had bad experience with him. So I can't wait to see more of this guy and what he's doing. Obviously, the Fire Sisters are already in trouble, or at least Karen is. Hanekal was involved somehow. I didn't expect that to be her on the phone at the end. But yeah, other than him, we've got continuation of the Kanbaru scene and them just playing Hanafuda. And most of this is just pure entertainment. Um, I don't know anything about Hanafuda, so that's fun to have Kanbaru kind of be from that perspective too. Not really knowing what she's doing, and then when she learns she's losing and getting pissed off about it. Pretty relatable, so that's just entertaining, and Kanbaru is a really fun character. Super well drawn, I love her outfits or lack thereof, and so uh, it's just entertaining hearing them interact and talking about his harem and all the different people. Like, you are really good with Senju Gahara. I think you're gonna end up with Hanekawa though, kind of just fanning the flames of the fandom and the waifu wars. So that's interesting that she would bring that up, especially after just watching Kizu about Hanekawa and how she really thinks that. Maybe this is Nisio he's really saying, like, hey, you know, you never know. He may be with Senju Gahara now, but it's not a foregone conclusion. You never know what might happen. And he's got all these other branching paths, and then they go to Mayoi, but then when she finds out about Twister, Nadeko is the real final boss, and maybe that's foreshadowing too. Maybe, maybe not romantically, but in other ways, when she goes crazy enough to do something totally insane to get Araragi. I don't know. But uh, funny stuff, cleaning up the room with all the books piled up the way that they did, playing these games, all their conversations, that was all entertaining. And all the stuff about her being his lover and having an affair and how it would lead to Senju Gahara murdering people, good stuff. But her saying, like, Hanekawa and Senju Gahara, though, they have a more unique relationship and that might not necessarily be the case were he to end up with Hanekawa. And then seeing later Senju Gahara's reactions to all of this, like, oh, you weren't studying, immediately just turns down the alley and walks away when she sees him because he wasn't studying and not listening to him at all and threatening him and that he'll die and the girl he cheated with will die. I'm pretty open-minded about it, you know. But if you're serious, then yes, murder is what's going to happen. And I'll also kill Kanbaru too. 
<laughs> to keep you company. Although I don't actually believe in an afterlife. I just want you to know how serious this is and like shoving her hand at his mouth and all this stuff felt like a really, really abusive. <laughs> like Senjo Gahara has always been like this. And it's still really funny when she comes up with the really quick-witted comebacks. Like when he says, I saw a strange guy outside of Kambaru's house. And she's like, oh, was there a mirror there? <laughs> like, that was just so quick and snappy and biting and harsh. And it's funny. And it's been always been so over-the-top and ridiculous. And because it's happening to Araragi, uh, it, it all just... It has a more lighthearted tone a lot of the time. And yeah, she says all this harsh shit all the time. And... It's not, like, technically the healthiest relationship, but it's usually forgivable just because of the tone. But I feel like here, it felt like it was going a little overboard with with her. Kind of being sort of a, a controlling, abusive person. It's not to the point where I'm, like, bothered by it, because it's still just funny, and I know not to take it that seriously but I did feel like it got a little more in that direction. And maybe I should take that seriously. Maybe that's actually going to be relevant. Maybe they're going to discuss that at some point. I just really felt like in that conversation between them, she was a little more abusive than usual. Maybe because it's just been a little while since I've seen her, and in Kizu we had interactions with Hanekawa instead. I don't know, but yeah, that's just how it felt. Overall, it was still just funny and entertaining and her dialogue is just a ton of fun. So yeah, we've got mystery with Kanbaru and her mother. She talks about that too, about hiding her injury from her grandparents and how they're worried, of course, but they're not trying to pry too deeply when things connected to her parents or her mother are involved. So we get a little bit of mention of that, that there's something a little deeper going on there and then that's expanded upon with Kaiki, which again was just a really great looking scene, and the fact that they mentioned before, like, Oshino was part of your harem too, and now he's gone and we need a replacement. Here you go, here's a new older guy, and he even compares him to Oshino a little bit, and in a way, uh, it seems like they're pretty different in a lot of ways, but in that he seems to know about oddities, seems to do these things for money, although his priorities about maintaining balance probably would not be the same as Kaiki's from what I've seen so far. He also compares him to Guillotine Cutter, which is interesting because, of course, if you haven't seen Kizu, if you watched the anime in release order, you wouldn't know who that was. And maybe some people would say that to be an exciting mystery, but I don't really see how. I think that would be very surface level and nothing else. You know, if all, all it is is a name. And so if you don't know who that is, there's really no, like, interesting speculation because it could be literally anyone. So you just be like, oh, I, that's someone that I don't know. I guess eventually I'll find out who it is. And there's really nothing more to it than that. That's not a very interesting mystery. I think that has a lot more meaning when you know who he's talking about. So yeah, I think that works if you've already seen Kizu. Still moving relatively slowly, but it's just fun. The character interactions and the dialogue are good as always. And there's a lot of intrigue still building up. Things are progressing. Funny stuff with Senjo Gahara, despite being pretty mean. My, my greatest shame is having my heart stolen by a man like you. Stuff like that. What else was it that she said? I mean, she said drop dead. She was imitating Mayoi, which was funny, as I called that out right before he did. And anything she was saying, abusing her sundereness to say whatever she wants, which isn't too surprising, nor is the kidnapping. But him breaking out of the chains when... Karin texts that she needs help, or no, it was Sukihi. They're both involved, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it said that it was the younger one, so yeah. Breaking out of the chains was badass, and her accepting that and saying, I'm not gonna let you go, like, I'm, I'm gonna stop you here. You're gonna have to go through me. But him also saying, why did you fall for me in the first place? Would you really be okay with the kind of guy who's not gonna fight to go help somebody? let alone, you know, his sisters, and of course thinking that that's really cool of him. But yeah, I do enjoy the pace we're going at. You know, Bake was about introducing these girls and their conflicts. Kizu was telling this very precise prequel story with Shinobu 
and Hanekawa and all that, and now after that we can kind of just do whatever and we can have longer scenes of the characters just hanging out since we know them so well and like them so much. So I can't wait to see where it goes, how Hanekawa's involved, like I said I didn't expect the call to be from her, how is she involved in this, what does she have going on with Senjo Gahara, how is everybody else going to be connected, Mayoi is the only one not directly connected so far. But she is an oddity, so that can play in as well. But yeah, and uh, Senju Gahara's superpower of knowing how many women Araragi has interacted with in a day is impressive. But yeah, um, still fun stuff with a lot of intrigue and the introduction of a mysterious new guy and a bunch of red. So let me know your thoughts on this episode. We can talk about it more down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out the stuff linked down in the description as well. Really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.